Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another weekly e-learning uh, session. This week, we have AFLEX Hose joining us to discuss uh, Teflon hose assemblies, construction, and application. Uh, and again, as I look around the room, um, I do see a bit of a, a tighter group. Uh, it's a bit of a niche uh, segment of the industry. So we do, do have some OEMs, some chemical and pharmaceutical customers, uh, manufacturing, engineering, and some universities. Uh, and you can see the geography on the map uh, at hand. So many of you have been with us, a few of you haven't. So I will briefly just uh, remind you of what we do here at Peerless. Um, we've been around for over 100 years. Um, most recently, we've just become uh, known as a trusted source for process components that keep plants operating efficiently and projects running smoothly. Um, we are proud of the uh, roles we play in helping some of our customers navigate some pretty tough uh, challenges in the industry. Uh, we do have three main segments of our business, the Procore, uh, which works with our OEM customers, the process group, um, and that would be uh, the, the group that works with our chemical and pharmaceutical, uh, many of you in the room today, uh, and our high temp fabrication segment, which uh, we work with high temperature insulation, uh, refractory, and scientific surfaces. So joining us again is AFLEX Hose. We have Ernie Stark. He is our sales engineer. Um, he will be hosting the presentation today from the peerless side. We have Dan Morgan, uh, who will be pulling all the levers behind the scenes here to run today's meeting. Uh, Greg Barrell, who works with our process customers uh, and works closely with Ernie uh, and this product group. And there's me, and I spend most of my time with the OEM segment of the business. So I asked Ernie what he did when he wasn't selling hose, and he told me that he's been involved in football for just about, as uh, he said, from six years old. Uh, he famously had the opportunity to coach Devin Street, uh, who went on to become a star at the uh, University of Pittsburgh, uh, and then ultimately was selected in the fifth round of the NFL draft. Um, for anyone interested, it was an unfortunate season to come out in the draft because there were plenty of wide receivers that went in that draft, uh, many, many notables and some eventual Hall of Famers. So um, there you have it. You didn't come here just for Teflon hose assembly information, but you got some football knowledge as well. So on that note, I will get back on task, turn it over to Dan Morgan, uh, and he's going to discuss the platform uh, that we're using for today's meeting and how you can play a role in it. Dan. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Um, Ernie, we'll, we'll have to get together later. I've been trying to work on my route tree. Maybe you can give me some, uh, some pointers. But uh, um, so, yeah, to everyone that's uh, new to, to these webinars, um, or again, if you're joining us uh, for second or third time we appreciate that of course um i just want to mention a couple of things how this is going to work in just just a few seconds i'll turn over the presentation to, to ernie um but as ernie is uh working through his presentation um we really do you know would like to to see questions from from you folks um uh, because it does obviously make the most sense as we're you know going through the presentation to cover topics and answer questions that are um, important to you and meaningful to you so um, you'll notice the questions panel um, in the interface of, of the WebEx platform. Um, so if there's anything at all that you want some clarification on or a question that you have, um, please submit a question through that interface. Um, and what I will be doing is, is keeping an eye on that, uh, monitoring those questions, and I will be finding uh, moments during the presentation to interject and ask those questions of Ernie um, so that we can get your answers and so that everybody can kind of hear what. Uh, what our thoughts are. So um, yeah, please do at any point in time, ask a question that way um, and we'll make sure to get it answered. So um, yeah, with that said, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hand this over to Ernie now. Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, just as a, a football note, I am actually living in Pennsylvania, but I am a Buffalo Bill fan, so with Peerless being up in Buffalo, I am right there with you guys. Nice. Um, Andre Reed from Allentown was drafted by the Bills, and that's when I became a Bills fan. So that's enough of my football story. So Aflex Hose, and not just Aflex Hose, but all PTFE Hose. Of course, I'm a little biased working for Watson Marvel slash Aflex. So who is AFLEX Watson Marlowe? As you can see there, we started in the UK. All of the extrusion of our PTFE is done there. 
the bottom right hand picture that is Pipersville, Pennsylvania, just about a half an hour south of Allentown, Pennsylvania. If anybody knows Billy Joel, of course, the song Allentown is based off the town that I live in. The two buildings on the left hand side is still AFLEX. However, we just spent X amount of millions of dollars on a new plant and it should be finished and fully operational in the UK by the fourth quarter of this year. So it's a little obsolete, but just wanted to give you an idea of the background of the buildings that we're working out of. So why do we use PTFE? And, and quite frankly, when I, when I first took this job, my wife said, what's PTFE? And no one knows PTFE. Everybody knows the uh, DuPont name, Teflon, right? Nonstick. You get more throughput through with Teflon hose than you would a silicone hose, rubber hose, metal hose. It's inert to 99.9% .9 of chemicals, super flexible, plenty of benefits. Uh, the point there, number one, the friction, we had just mentioned that. Uh, Teflon itself, the temperature range is extremely high. Oftentimes when you see there in point number two, 500, that's normally when you start putting braids and, and covers on the hose. And we'll touch on that a little bit later. Uh, point three there, CIP, clean in place or SIP, steam in place. Uh, the nice thing about our hose and majority of the competitors is you can autoclave the hoses 300 times for 30 minutes up to 275, depending on what, what hose manufacturer you purchase, 275, 250, and, and those times are variable. Could be you know 200 times at 50 minutes. Just, just a little guideline there. Um, and the high fatigue life. Honestly, we have customers not mine, but my colleague in the Midwest, he has a customer using a hose that's 13 years old and is still in their main production facility for shampoos. So, you know, the life of a PTFE hose is, is how you use it and, and how you take care of it, really. Now to the important part. Some hoses are you can change the the liner, the braid, the cover, all of them you can change the end fittings. This is just a little helpful hint of what we need, and not just AFLEX, it's any manufacturer, what they need in, in providing you with the correct hose. First is the size. You know, it, it, some customers who are new to sourcing hoses. They'll just say, I need a Teflon hose with flange fittings. Great, that's a great start. So what I try and do is just move down the stamped and that tells me exactly what hose they need and what their process is calling for. So T is temperature. Again, the temperature is going to dictate how the hose is fabricated. Multiple uh, braids, covers, Etc. The application. Anytime you're you're looking to source a hose, it's it's better to give more details about the application than not enough. And I, I know that sounds, you know, like common sense, but sometimes, as a salesperson, I really have to dig into the application. People are trying to protect their their, their process and their product, and I, I totally understand that. But at the same time, without those pertinent details, it's hard to give the right hose. Uh, the materials and, and media, again, with PTFE being inert to 99.9% .9 of chemicals, there are some chemicals that will react with the braid or the cover. So that's always important to know. Uh, pressure rating is often overlooked by by a lot of people even myself sometimes I, I have to admit um one thing that's really important 
to know is if you look in anybody's brochure, you'll you'll see the pressure rating of, you know, for example, a, a thousand psi. What most people don't realize, like for the example in tri clamps, it's the tri clamp that's going to set the pressure limit. That's the weakest part of the hose. So even though the hose might say 1000 PSI, it's the tri clamp or the fitting that's going to be that limiting factor. And the ends, uh, you know, I have customers that need Hastelloy ends, they need uh, carbon ends, 304 stainless, uh, and there's a million different types of, of ends out there and deliveries on there, but as everybody knows, we need the hose yesterday. So if you if you can do the the manufacturer a favor and, and try to give a little bit of a lead time, say you know it's August 26th and you need the hoses by October, I would beg and plead for you to try and get the hose list to the manufacturer or your rep or distributor, whoever you're trying to get resource the hoses from in plenty of time as possible. So what makes up a Teflon hose? On the right hand side in that picture, the white opaque part, that is the uh, PTFE liner. That's considered GP, general purpose. Most people call it, yeah, I need a white liner. That's a general purpose liner. For Aflex, we have that small helical wire wrapped around the GP liner. That's what gives us flexibility. Other manufacturers have that as well. The key to Aflex is when that liner is extruded, that helical wire is wrapped right around so they work in tandem. Uh, forget the marker ring, that's just there to show how it's crimped for um, sample hoses. The next would be the braid. Here we happen to have a stainless steel braid. If you switch over to the picture on the left, the next piece of the construction would be the blue rubber cover. There can be many different braids. Again, we'll get into that a little bit later. With Aflex, as you can see in the picture on the left, we have the GP liner, we have the fitting, and then we have the collar, the, the yellow part there. We crimp. Hey, Yes. Sorry, this is Dan. Um, could you uh, do you have the ability to just use your mouse and kind of like highlight the components as you're uh, as you're talking about them, so that we can kind of follow along with you? I, yeah, I tried. I can't oh, personally. Yeah. I can't see my pointer. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. So, that was my plan. And that's why I just said, "Well, I'm going to roll with it." Talking about it. Fair enough. All right. I Got apologize it. for that. I don't know why I can't see my my mouse. Yeah, we see it. So I don't know. Yeah. I have, I can move it, but oh, I have yeah. no idea where I'm at. So oh, sorry. Yeah. All right. Nope, you got it. Okay, so we're going to move on to the type of hose. So as you can see here, we have a convoluted hose. Convoluted has obviously convolutions built in compared to a, a smooth bore hose. These are generally more flexible than a smooth bore hose. Again, you can see on our core line, we have that stainless steel helical wire wrapped into the convolutions. Again, some other manufacturers have it, some don't. Um, it's, it's really up to what their technology group decides is best for their, for their hose. Um, the big thing really with convoluted hoses, it's really hard to kink these hoses. With the convolutions built in, most companies have a 90 degree convolution. Aflex, with our technology, we have 120 degree. So it's more of a rolling hill. So you can almost bend this thing like a pretzel and you may you may kink it if you really put a lot of force when you're bending it that way. But if you're just bending it like a pretzel and putting no external force on it, you probably will not kink this hose. Again, you can see the construction. 
no adhesive, all clamped together. Same, same setup. This is our core line hose, but this is our smooth bore. As you can see, the convolutions are gone. Comes out smooth as your as your table, your desk. Um, obviously, with the convolutions, you're going to have flow disruption because it's not smooth. With a smooth bore hose, much better flow rate than a convoluted hose. Uh, a lot of times, you will not find a convoluted hose in you know high purity in pharmaceutical even in chemical a lot of those need the flow rate need to have a, a straight flow uh, there's less chance for a bug trap or or trapped material in the convolutions so smooth bore i sell 90 percent of smooth bore all across the board pharmaceutical food and beverage chemical um aip pretty much anywhere that you name it um smooth bore at least for a flex is the better minimum bend radius than the convoluted hoses with our technology with that helical wire in there you can really really bend these things and have no worries at all uh it's, it's cut off in the picture but the Coraline hose it, it's known to be anti-kink so like i mentioned before whenever you see a white liner that's the gp the general purpose most of the hoses that i buy are another liner which we'll get to shortly uh, this is the most common though in just straight applications like uh, food and beverage i know most people in here are not food and beverage if there is any in here but they don't have to worry about any static buildup or any charge so most of the time they will use the white gp liner uh, like it says here fluid and gases yeah straightforward so here we go. This is the big seller, and I know that other competitors as well, anti-static is, is a huge part of their sales volume. So as opposed to the white GP liner, we now have our black anti-static liner. As you can see there, it says less than 2.5% high purity carbon. We've actually improved that to less than 2%. We just haven't announced it and put it out there for people it's we found a, a more efficient process to improve that to have even less carbon in there if you'll notice in the uh the go to meeting software we do have two handouts that explain um how we extrude and and, and mix the carbon in with the ptfe and how we have this thing called the mantle effect. So while you see the, the liner being black, on the inside portion where the material is actually flowing through the hose, there is actually a small micron amount, I believe it's like two, two micron size of the, the white GP liner in there. So the product actually never touches the carbon PTFE. Um, those, those handouts will explain that process and procedure. So I can give you, tell you, uh, pharmaceutical companies, black is a huge no-no. We can't have black. If that gets in our process and gets into the final process, you know, huge trouble. So with our process, we, we explain the process, we show them the papers, it's all been verified, FDA requirements, we, we meet all that. Their product actually never touches the black carbon. It's actually pretty interesting. So why should you use an anti-static hose? Uh, it, it's, it's quite simple. 
when they are using a, a material or a process where a, a static charge can build up, if that happens, it can poke a small hole into the liner. And you might not notice it right away, but eventually over time, the material is going to flow through the hose and little, each time a little bit of water or material, whatever material you're, is going to flow through that hole and it's either going to leak through the, the ferrule where the hose is crimped or it's going to stick into the braid and potentially cause a bubble in the braid. The, the next one, like I mentioned, is there is uh, Wiffy. Um, the, the big thing for me is most people, when they clean the hose, I would say 95% of my customers use steam to clean out the hose, or, or they use a combination of hot water and nitrogen to get the water out, or, or water and steam. That any dual phase media that you have going through the hose is going to, or potentially could, cause that static charge and it could pop a hole in that white GP liner. When you switch to the anti-static, the black liner, with that carbon in there, what it does is allows that static charge to pass through the PTFE to go to the braid and down to the fittings and ground through the final equipment, whatever, if it's a, a, a vat, a reactor, another piece of equipment. So if you're using any kind of material that can cause static, or if you're using a, a clean in place or steam in place, I would highly recommend using the black anti-static liner. Ernie, um, real quick, we have a couple of questions come in here. Um, so I think now's a good time. If uh, this one you, uh, I think you covered pretty thoroughly um, on your previous slide, but um, just maybe to reinforce the fact, um, it sounds like there's definitely some concern out there, which you mentioned uh, about the carbon black fill. Um, so is there literally zero chance of, of any of that carbon uh, leaching into the process? Yeah, we we have the leachable and extractable certification. I, I don't have it here. I mean, I can certainly get anybody the, the certain uh, certification. We have that as an example. We can, you know, get it to you guys at Peerless and you can pass it on to the customers. But we, we, we do have a certification of leachables, extractables. That's, yeah, we, we passed that test. Okay, perfect. Um, and then another question came in. So essentially they're asking like, is there any applications where, where you wouldn't want to use anti-static, where, where anti-static would um, be detrimental, um, or is it, is it safe, so to say, to, to specify anti-static in, in all applications, whether or not it's you know, a, a true need or not? Yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah, that's a great question. And, and I, I know I'm throwing out 90% quotes all the time, but it literally, it, it's honestly true. I, I try and have most people buy the black anti-static just because you never know when you're going to change your cleaning process. So say right now you're just washing it, the hose out with hot water, but then the company invests in, you know, a steam in place process. Well, if you have that general purpose and then six months later you you change your cleaning process, now there's a potential for static buildup. I, I always try and have customers buy anti-static. Um, the pricing across the board for manufacturers is very minimal increase. So I'd rather just be be safe than sorry. Just because, like I said, you never know when things are going to change. And, and it's not yeah. it's not detri it's not detrimental at all. It's it's the same liner, just with a little bit less than two percent of high purity carbon. Um, even if you don't need it, it, it will not affect your process, your, your final product. It's just more of a built-in safety factor. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I think that's a great explanation. Um, I'll let you know if there's any follow-up to that. Um, and then again, just to explain the situation with the handouts, um, if, uh, for all the attendees out there, 
uh, you'll see that there's a, a little panel in the in the interface, and if you just hit the drop down arrow, um, you can see two PDFs that you can just uh, download right from right from the interface. So, um, okay, thanks, Ernie. Yeah, yeah, I love the questions, and, and believe it or not, that's a very common question everywhere that I go. So, good job. All right. Uh, so here you can see, uh, looking at that picture, those black specks. That's actually where the static broke through the uh, GP liner. Um, they're not large holes, but again, over time, if you have that product flowing through there, it's going to leak through the ferrule or it's going to build up inside the, the braid. And you won't know it for a while if it's building up in the braid and you could have all kind of contamination. So that's another reason why I always suggest anti-static whether they need it or not so what types of material are there for ptfe hoses every manufacturer offers just what you see there it might not have that stainless steel helical wire but it, it will just be a ptfe straight tube so imagine just a silicone hose with no um, braid around it. That's exactly what you're getting there with the with the PTFE. Uh, I don't see a whole lot out there when I when I go see customers. It's used in very very small applications. So one that I do supply to is they're they're draining from a 50,000 gallon reactor down to a small almost like a bucket size tote. And they're just taking samples out of the, the reactor. It's no pressure. It's gravity fed. They don't need any, you know, braid, thrills, frills, nothing. Just a simple tube, but they want to be uh, PTFE. They'll use that in, in this case. Again, the pressure is very low. Um, so that, that would be the type of application where you would see this. Uh, not too often, but it is, it is available. This is what I see most of the time in chemical companies. So it's just the PTFE in either GP or AS, and they'll have the stainless steel braid on there. The braid gives it the pressure rating, and it also gives it temperature rating. So for AFLEX with the stainless steel braid, you can go up to 500 degrees with that. It is, it's higher than most people need, but that's just how it's it's built in. Um, I know the slide says 316 stainless. That might not be true for some manufacturers. Most it is a, a 316 stainless. My my one caveat to this is I always caution customers about going with just a stainless braid. If one of those braids happens to stick up people can really get hurt I, I know that we should all be wearing gloves and and this and that but we are human and um i haven't personally witnessed it but my my manager has uh they had a stainless steel hose at the one customer site the hose was not cleaned one of the braids stuck up he didn't have a glove on he he grabbed the hose cut his hand, thought nothing of it because it didn't really hurt. But then two hours later, his hand looked like a catcher's mitt because whatever product was on the uh, on the braid, it reacted with his hand and it swelled up immensely. So while it's very useful, you have to be very careful about dragging it or moving it or how you wash it. And, and I would definitely, if you're taking it offline and, and moving it i would certainly be careful and inspect it for any types of braid being bent up here's the one that's becoming more and more common you'll notice that we have a pb braid so it's made of polypropylene it the pressure rating drops significantly the temperature rating drops significantly 
But if you don't need a high temperature and a high pressure and you want a light hose, like say you're, you're removing the hoses from your application after every use and you have to walk it down to wash it. Well, who wants to lug around a huge heavy hose that, you know, say it's 20 feet, who, who wants to lug that around? So the poly braid is a nice option. Um, you definitely have to be careful. I have some customers who have this on the floor and if they drag it, it will tear up. Um, if you get it wet, it certainly makes it heavier to move and it will weaken the, the fibers. But overall, as a nice lightweight hose, this is certainly the way to go. The last point there about chloride stress, we sell this hose mainly for chlorine applications. Chlorine will do a number on stainless steel. So this is one way to get around that. Not the chlorine itself, but the off-gassing of the chlorine. So using a PB braid, if you're operating in the temperatures and pressure ranges, this PB braid is a great option. One thing I wanna point out in the picture is it's the anti-static and you'll notice there's two wires, you'll see the, the wire on the bottom, the black strip, that's a Monel wire. And that's extremely important. Without that wire, there would be no electrical continuity. So the hose wouldn't be grounded. With that wire, it stretches from end to end. It's crimped under the ferrule and the fitting. So if electricity does happen to pass through the hose, it's gonna pass through that Monel wire from one end to the other. And every time we sell a, a, a PB braided hose, it has that Monel wire. I believe other manufacturers have that as well. By far the most cover that we sell is the rubber cover. Here you'll see ours is blue for the BioFlex. Uh, we also do have uh, black covers, and we do have customers from time to time that say, hey, I would like to have a green cover for my inlet, a red for my outlet, or I've got a customer that buys pink, purple, and tan. And those are for dedicated lines. So if the hoses were being washed and they're set on the drying rack, the operator can come in and say, okay, I'm on line two today. I know that line two is the purple hose so they know exactly which hose to go grab. They're, they're easy to clean. Um, most chemicals do not react with the EPDM. You can see the temperature ranges there. Most of the time, my customers are barely going up to 300 and definitely not as low as negative 40F. So this is actually the perfect hose. You still get the liner. It could be GP or AS. It comes with the stainless steel braid. And again, a blue cover, a black cover, or depending how many hoses and how many feet you need, we can get you different colored rubber covers. Um, just the rubber cover, if you're, if you're gonna drag the hose, the rubber cover is going to hold up to being drug along the floor. It's very durable. It does nothing for the flexibility. Uh, if you talk to anybody out there who knows the BioFlex line, they'll tell you how flexible it is, even with the rubber cover. Um, I would say most manufacturers, their number one product is a hose with a rubber cover on it. Here's another option. Um, I do sell quite a bit of this, and there are a bunch of competitors who have the same type of hose out there. So say you have an application where you need to go to 350F. Well, that's well below just having the stainless braid because that'll go to 500 and the rubber cover only goes to 300. Here's where the platinum cured silicone comes in. It goes up to 400. The biggest benefit that I see and customers have told me is 
they don't want a rubber cover, they don't need the rubber cover, or they're going above the, the 300, and they don't want the stainless braid for the reasons that I mentioned about, you know, the, the braid picking up and, and everything else. So a nice option is to have the silicone cover. This particular model, it's a clear silicone. There's also, um, majority of them out there are white platinum cured. And, and you'll see them from us, St. Cobain, um, Avana Pure. There's a whole bunch of customer uh, competitors and manufacturers that have the white. This is just what Aflex does. We have both versions. We have the, the clear and the white. Um, again, it does nothing with the flexibility. It, it's just more of a, a protection layer. So as before, I mentioned about people dragging the hose and, and some places that I walk into, the floor is smooth as could be. Some places are a little bit of old facilities and the floor has the, uh, the potential to really dig into the hose if it's drug. So here we have our safeguard. Um, it, it's crimped right underneath the ferrule. So you have to decide when you're purchasing a hose if you want that or not. And I believe that's the same for other manufacturers as well. Uh, other manufacturers do offer one that they can put over if you decide to purchase one after. Aflex, you have to make that decision when you're buying the hose. Um, here again, you can see behind, you see that little orange marker there, that's the PB braid. So if a customer knows, hey, when we go to clean this thing, we're gonna be dragging it along the floor. I would simply recommend, hey, have you thought about a safeguard? It's gonna give it that extra protection. It's black. So you're not gonna see scuff marks or anything if you do drag it. Um, it it's really a nice benefit. Uh, I really do wish more people would, would purchase this, to be honest with you. It's a shame to walk in to a place after a hose is only six months old and they've drugged the PB braid across the floor and you can start to see the, the fiber start to, to fringe out. Here's another unique one. It's our protection coil. Uh, it's it's a, a stainless steel that fits right over top. As you can see in the picture, they have it over the stainless braid. That That's certainly an option. Um, I'll be quite honest, I, I don't have a lot of people buy this one. They would rather have the safeguard, the black one that we just showed in the previous picture. Um, this is a nice option, but again, most people get the rubber cover, and, and if they don't, they'll, they'll get the poly braid, and then they'll use that with the safeguard. So this is there as an option. Um, you can see there it's welded to the ferrules. Everything is welded or crimped down, so it's not going to go anywhere. It's Most people just go for the safeguard option, but this is a nice second option. Okay, flared through or lined, or I'm sure there's other terms that, that people have for it out there. This is where when they're fabricating the hose, they stretch the PTFE through the fitting, so in this case through the flange, so that the PTFE covers the main portion where the flow is going to be for the application. So with this picture right here, this application, their product, at least from the end of the hose to end of the hose, is only going to touch PTFE. If this would be a picture of a non-lined, the hose itself would have the GP liner, but the ends, the fittings, would still have stainless steel. So the product, when it first hits the hose, would touch stainless, run through the hose with PTFE, and then back to stainless and into the connection. So what this does is it allows that product to only touch PTFE, and there's no restriction. Because it's lined all the way from end to end, 
it's maintaining that one, say it's a one inch, it's maintaining one inch all the way through. Where if it's not lined, it would drop off at the end to where it would connect to the stainless steel. And I, I hope I'm describing that correctly. So a, a flared through, there are no restrictions at all in that flow because the whole tube from connection to connection is one straight piece. Hey, Ernie, just a, a quick question on that. Um, are there other, so we saw obviously a flange with a flare through. Um, are there other fitting types where you can achieve the flare through as well? Yeah, and yeah, that's a great point and thanks for bringing that up. Um, most of the time I see flared through in pharmaceutical because they don't want that final product touching anything but but PTFE until it gets to that final filling machine. So tri clamps, um, cam locks, definitely see there the flange. Um, we do have, and I'm not sure what other manufacturers, but those are the three main things. But the majority of that I see are are lined tri clamps and lined flanges. Okay, great, cool. Yeah, I'll let you know if there's any follow-up to that. Thanks. Sure. So here's here's a nice feature. This is what we do at Aflex. Other manufacturers will will stamp on there, or they'll have a a tag that's uh, FEP covered. At Aflex, we laser etch information onto the ferrule on one side of the hose. So laser etching, we found it doesn't disappear. You know, when, when we used to stamp it on there, over time, just with chemicals being on it and cleaning and potentially scuffing, you would lose some of the information. Since we've been laser etching, it doesn't go anywhere. Once it's laser etched, it's there. Uh, the one thing that I wanna point out that's hugely important and it would help Peerless out, it helps my customers out. If you have a hose and you would like to order that same hose, if you go down where it says serial number 60138, all you have to do is, is tell your rep, hey, I ordered a hose from you a year ago, I need to order that same exact hose. All you have to do is give them that serial number and they'll know exactly what's part of that hose. It's one inch by 10 feet. It has an anti-static liner. It has a stainless steel braid. It has a rubber cover that's blue and it has lined tri-clamps on it. That's how important that serial number is. And again, with laser etching, that material is going to be there and it's not going to, to disappear and the nice thing is it shows if you have an operator who's new and they're not too sure they'll know what the temperature rating is for that hose and in, i mean for us it has the aflex contact information there other manufacturers might have slightly different text on there one nice thing for us is we can add a few lines under our standard so if you wanted to put you know line one etched underneath on that ferrule you could and if you want to have it laser etched on the opposite end you could have that as well this is a really impressive tagging system that we have as you can see it's only for the silicone covered hose and there's the white platinum that i was mentioning before so you can put this on the white platinum cured silicone, or you can put it on the clear that we showed that we showed before. Um, so what we do is we take a piece of paper, it's special paper, I, I don't know the exact name, but what we do, you can have a million different colors with a million different fonts and a million different colored fonts. So if this customer wanted the green paper with you know, line one in black text on there, they could do that. We wrap silicone around it, we bake it in the oven so that it cures right in line with the 
silicone cover. We bake it so that it cures together so there's no way that material is going to get underneath that tag. I have a customer that buys 20 footers and they put three of these tags, one on each end and one in the middle. So if a, an operator is, you know, 20 feet away and it's a little dark, they can see and look down at any part of that hose and see, oh, okay, that's the green, that's line one. Okay, perfect. That's very popular. This is something new that Aflex has just come out with. I know other manufacturers have had something very similar to this. We were a little bit late to the game, but nonetheless, we're, we're in the game. This is what we call a colored cuff. So as you see on the left, again, you can have multiple different colors. That could be a black font if you want. So what it is, is that it's that paper again, but it's FEP shrink wrapped onto the collar. So you don't want to do that over our laser etching. You would do this on the opposite end. So there, as you can see, it's HCL. So we know that that line is for HCL. Uh, the picture on the right, that's just showing if you would have our standard text on there. And, and the thing that I'm excited about, because I, I had to turn people away in previous years, is we're now going to be getting into the RFID tags. We're going to be getting into the QR codes and barcodes. So it'll just be FEP shrink wrapped around the, the collar and it'll have the, the RFID or, or any marking on there that you want. What the picture doesn't show is where that blue cover starts, you could actually have that HCL not cover the collar, but you could have it on the very end where the stainless steel meets the rubber cover. So there's definitely options and we can put that in the middle of the, of the hose. So this is, is brand new. Um, we've had a couple customers um, that we've given this to to test it. They they like it. They appreciate it. Uh, the next step is to get into those RFID and, and barcodes. Just quickly going over some applications. Um, there you can see that's a smooth bore hose with the flanges on. It's lined. It's anti-static. Um, why they went with that hose in particular, it's a smooth bore hose, and, and why not just hard pipe it? Because they actually use their hoses interchangeably throughout different locations. So that hose there, I forget the exact, I, I don't want to say it's like uh, two feet, but they use that same hose throughout the whole plant. So instead of hard piping, they can take that hose and place it somewhere else. Here you'll see it again, the Coraline Plus, uh, the flexibility of it. They, they could have used a different smoothbore hose, but they like the, the durability and the flexibility of this hose. Um, again, you can see it coming down from the ceiling and bending into the top of that vessel. They could have used, I mean, really, they could have used a the, the platinum cured silicone cover, but they liked the uh, black rubber cover because when they disconnect them, you can see how long they are. They do drag along the floor. Here's a big one. Um, definitely need a rubber cover for this and for the flexibility. Um, tanker loading and offloading, not just on trucks, but uh, I do supply into rail cars. And if you can imagine a hose being connected to uh, a rail car being drug back and forth from loading and offloading, uh, the smooth bore, the flexibility. You can see how that hose on the left-hand side is really being bent around. Um, yeah, definitely want to have the rubber cover and a smooth bore hose for the flow rate. Here again, it's you can see the, why do they use a, a hose there? Because they use the same hose 
could route another part of the plant. So when this part of the plant shuts down, and yes, this is actually for a sewage plant, um, they use these, they wash them out, and you can imagine the cleaning process they have for this, but they do use them in another area of the plant. So they'll disconnect the hoses from these pumps and they'll move them to another section of the plant. So part of the year with heavy usage, they'll use this side. Other times when they're not as busy, they might disconnect three or four and move these hoses to a different part of the plant. Again, smooth bore, and it's definitely anti-static black liner. This one always blows my mind. Uh, this is actually from the UK. Uh, I saw this when I was in training over there oh, a bunch of years ago. There is actually 80 hoses throughout that whole setup. And I know it's, it's not a real good picture because you can't see the hoses. I just wanted to show you that there's silicone hoses, silicone covered hoses, 80 of them there in, in that particular picture. Here's another one, um, yogurt. I had no idea when I started it at, at AFLEX years ago that you would need to use a PTFE. I always thought it would be a food grade rubber or a silicone hose, but they like the transfer of a PTFE hose. They said it, it works better, they get more throughput through the hose. And here you can see they actually have a blue hose. That's one of our AFLEX hoses. But that white hose is from a competitor. And you can see that that one's a convoluted hose, where the blue one is a smoothbore hose. And, and just quickly, when, when hoses are hooked up, it's really, really important to realize and recognize that, yes, you want the sag in the hose, but on the picture on the left, right where that arrow is, if that hose would sit there and then have material flowing through it, that, that arrow is gonna be a huge stress point and it could potentially pull away from the ferrule. So what we suggest is putting 90s or 45 degree elbows on that relieves the stress makes it a better flow you don't have to worry about the hose separating from the ferrule it's it's it, either you could put it on or or the hose can be manufactured with a 90 or 45 but if you if you have a setup like this just keep in mind that that's really going to stress the hose and could cause a failure it, it's always better to be safe than sorry so, so put a 90 or a, a 45 on there. Here again, just quickly, the, the picture on the left, it's a static um, hose reel. It, it's, it doesn't move with the hose. So it could rub against the hose on the ends when it moves up and down, wear and tear. Whereas the picture on the right is more of a pulley system. So it actually moves with the hose. You're not going to have the wear and tear or, or cutting into the hose. So that, that would be my suggestion if you have any kind of setup like that. And that, that does it. I, I appreciate your time. Awesome. Thank you, Ernie. Um, yeah, so at the moment, there are no questions in the queue. So I mean, you did a great job of explaining everything. But I'll remind everyone again that we are... You know, we'll be hanging around for another minute or two as uh, I, I'm going to turn this back over to Kevin uh, real quick. He's got another slide or two to wrap us up. But if there are any other questions at all, please do continue to submit them um, and we'll make sure to get your answers uh, here or, you know, we need to follow up after the webinar. Yep. Thanks, Dan. Thank you um, certainly for uh, being here with us, Ernie. We appreciate it. Uh, we do apologize for going just a little bit longer than we normally do, but probably it's a good thing that not everybody talks as fast as I do. So, um, Ernie, thanks again. Uh, you do see a picture here in the screen that um, not necessarily a pretzel, but it certainly does show the flexibility of some of the hoses that we're talking about. Um, also, I would just like to add to something that Ernie mentioned about the uh, pin stamping and laser etching. We also do some pin stamping here. Some of our customers um, uh, actually demand that we pin stamp every single item we provide them with unique serial numbers, project numbers, lot numbers, whatever it is they want. So 
Um, if you think you have any needs in that arena, we can certainly help. So um, thanks again. So next week, um, we're doing corrosion under insulation. We're being told that it is a, a big problem out there for uh, the plant environment. Uh, we're having Rockwool join us, uh, one of our partners, to discuss corrosion under insulation. So um, again, a final reminder, if you want to um, take those uh, the handouts there, uh, if you do think of any questions uh, after the fact, we will be sending out a survey. Please do fill it out. Uh, we value your input greatly uh, and we value your attendance here. So um, thanks again. Everybody stay safe and we will talk to you in a week. Thank you, everyone. So long.